Well, joining me now is John Herbst, former U.S. ambassador to Ukraine and senior director of the Atlantic Council's Eurasia Center. John, thank you so much for, for being with us. You know, I want to talk about the sanctions. I want to talk about American assistance. But first, I want to talk about this date, talk about the significance of this war, you know, nearly hitting the two-year mark. What does this mean for Ukraine? Well, Ukraine has been severely hit by the Russians. It's not just the fact that they've, you know, bombed cities, they bombed civilians, they bombed inf civilian infrastructure. Um, they are committing massive war crimes. We saw this at Bucha, we saw this at Irpin, two cities the Russians took in the first couple of months since the invasion and then and then withdrew from. We know in Mariupol war crimes are even more horrific, but international monitors are not able to get there to monitor those war crimes. So it's just been a disaster. And of course, the failure to prevent to pass this new aid package is a key reason why the Russians were able to take the town of Avdivka a few days ago. So this needs to change. The, the Republicans have to get that onto the floor for a vote. And the White House has to step up and send more advanced weapons that they've been refusing to send. If they had sent more advanced weapons, Ukraine's counteroffensive last year on land would have been more successful. And Ambassador, we know, you know, President Biden is certainly frustrated uh, with the fact that Congress has not passed this additional aid. Do you think these new sanctions against Russia will actually make any significant difference? I believe the original sanctions have had an impact and these sanctions will too. Uh, people talk about the Russian economy being not so affected by the sanctions because they are using Russian supply statistics. Even the IMF and the World Bank are using Russian supply statistics, which are likely false. But it is true that the sanctions to date have not stopped the Russian war effort. And if we start to go after the countries which are benefiting from trading with Russia in violation of the sanctions, we might be able to have an even greater impact on the Russian economy. You know, and Ambassador, it's so important to remember that uh, in the midst of war, so many times people are the ones caught up in the chaos. What is life like on the ground for the people of Ukraine right now? Well, the people near the front, the life is a living hell. The people under Russian occupation subject to war crimes, it's even worse. And throughout most of the country, they have to worry about bombs exploding, drones arriving, missiles arriving. And that's why it's very important for the United States to send more advanced weapons like attack missiles with a range of 300 kilometers, which the administration still refuses to send. Well, so that leads me perfectly to my next question then, because what does, what message is this sending, all of this back and forth in Congress to both Ukraine, but also to Russia? Look, um, it's outrageous that a smallish group of isolationist-minded Republicans has stopped this aid. Uh, they don't understand that Moscow is pursuing an aggressive foreign policy designed to come after American interests and that they are enabling a Russian victory, which is all, and they're also undermining American leadership. So they claim to want to make America strong. They are making America weak. They are making America look pathetic. And, and this is very dangerous for our future. Certainly, Ambassador, do you think there are any signs of an end to this war? How long do you think this can continue? Ukraine's gonna fight to the end because the Russians have said, the Putin has said, that they want to quote unquote destroy Nazism, which doesn't really exist beyond a few fanatics in Ukraine. They're really talking about destroying Ukrainian identity and making Ukrainians fully subservient to Russians. And Ukrainians are not gonna accept that. And if Russia were to win in Ukraine, we'd have to worry about defending our NATO allies. Mm -hmm. So we have a vital interest in giving Ukraine the weapons, which if we give them, they will defeat Putin. And we have to provide aid, which means, again, those, that small group of Republicans in the House have to come to their senses and they need to permit a vote so we can send the aid package so Ukraine can maintain this, their, their fight. And yeah, we will see uh, if that aid comes again. Congress now on a two week break. Former U.S. Ambassador to Ukraine, John Herbst, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.